Kako. Welcome to another Residential Life Chapel service for October 31st, 2021. Before we get started, may I please ask that you put away all cell phones or iPads or anything that may cause a distraction so that you can give your full attention to tonight's chapel service. Let's get started. Epule Kako. Lord, we just thank you for this day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we pray for your blessings upon tonight's chapel service, that you may touch the hearts that need to be touched, heal the hearts that need to be healed, Lord, and bring joy and life to our chapel service tonight. Lord, we love you and we praise you. Maka'inoa, o kamakua, kekeke a me ka'uhane hemolele. Amen. Please join me in kapule akahaku. E ko mako mako e loko kolani, e ho ano ia ko inoa. He ki mai ko aupuni, e malama ia ko make make makahunua nei. E liki me ia, e malama ia makalani la. E ha ave mai a mako i ke ia la, i aina mako no nei ia la. E kala mai ho ia mako i ka mako lave hala ana, me mako e kala nei ka poe, i lave hala i ka mako. Mai ho ku oe a mako i ka ho vale vale ia mai. E ho opa kele no na e ia mako i ka ino. No ka mea, no ke a puni, a me ka mana, a me ka ho o nani ia mau lo aku. Amen. Ho o nani ka mako a mau, ke ke ki me ka uhane no. Ke aku a mau ho o mai ka ipu. Ko ke au, ko ke lau. Amen. What a moment you have brought me to such a freedom I have found in you. You're the healer who makes all things new, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not going back, moving ahead, here to declare to you that my past is over and you, things are made new, surrendered my life.
Nicole Ovo OTV Nicole Bubalova. And today's reading comes from Second Kings chapter four, one through seven. And this is the story of the widow's oil. Now a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow vessels at large for yourself from all your neighbors, even empty vessels. Do not get a few. And you shall go in and shut the door behind you and your sons, and pour out into all these vessels, and you shall set aside what is full. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They are bringing the vessels to her, and she poured. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, This is not one vessel more. And the oil stopped. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons can live on the rest. Here ends the reading. So as seen from this text, the widower had nothing but a jar of oil, and that jar of oil was not allowed. And she was in debt. After her husband passed away, the debt had moved from him to her family. And in order to pay the debt, she had to give her children away to the debt collectors. And so in order to avoid that, um, Elisha has told her to bring vessels and pour oil into them. And it wasn't just one vessel. and It was a, it was a lot. And vessels aren't your typical pots. They're huge. In those days, the vessels were big, like pots. And um, when she got those vessels, she poured the oil into there. And even though there wasn't a lot of oil in that jar, that jar filled up a lot of vessels. And when she didn't need any more, it stopped. And in doing so, she paid off her debt and she was able to have the life that she wanted with her sons. So today I have three key points that I wanted to share with you guys. The first is hope. Don't give up even though life doesn't look so good. Don't look at the bad in your life. Find the silver lining and try to have a good outlook on your life. Even though you are going up through a rough patch in your life, you can only go up from there. There's a low point in your life and in those situations you can really only get better. Every situation that you go through makes you, you. You can either go up or you can go down. Um, in this case, the widower was probably at her lowest point in her life. She was on the verge of losing her family. She just lost her husband. She was at her ultimate low. And by filling these vessels, she was able to ride <laughs> raise herself up and make herself better as well as her family and the second idea that I have is the idea of having more so take advantage of the opportunities you are given don't focus on what you don't have and work with what you have because what you have God might need and manifest what you have into something great make your mark when or I should say, growing up, every day I was told, what kind of legacy did you make? Are you someone that's just gonna be forgotten after your time? Or are you someone that's gonna leave a mark large enough for the next generations to remember you by? You don't wanna be someone who's forgotten. You wanna be remembered after your time, right? And so in this particular case, even though it might not seem like a big thing for her to pay off her debts, the fact that she was able to fill these vessels with oil and pay off all her debts that she was stuck in, that made her a great legacy because she not only saved her own practically life, she also saved her own kids. And that story will pass on for generations. So the whole idea of this is just find the little thing in your life 
that you have that makes you who you are and manifest that make that into something that not exactly defines you but something that makes you greater I guess makes you leave a mark and my last point is confidence see the good in you you are the best so we all have something to offer and be confident in what you do have and don't have any regrets everyone has something you have a talent that you can give it might not seem like it at first because like we all have something that we're good at that some other people might not see as good but as you get older those things make you as I said who you are and we all have a kuleana in our life it sometimes it's something that is gained or inherited inherited <laughs> sorry um, sometimes it's passed down sometimes it's something that you have to have and other times it's something that you work for and every single person has something to give there is not one person in this presidential life program that has nothing to give we all have something that we will be known for, something that we can give to others, something that we can show. So be confident in what you have because sometimes the littlest of things in life can make you the best supporter, friend, whatever. Um, and don't have any regrets. When you make decisions in your life, don't have any regrets because it's gonna only pull you down. You want to be somewhere where when you look back on life, you're gonna be like, I'm glad I did that. You don't wanna look back on life and say, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I should have done this. Because that is gonna make you see only the negative, see what you could have been. Now, sometimes there are decisions that we make that are really like, you don't know why you did it, but sometimes those situations actually push you for make you a better you so in the end you gain more than what you thought through all of this you can push yourself for make you a better you just like the widower who gained more than she needed and paid off her debt saving her son's lives and it's really good to pray because sometimes it's good to have someone to talk to. Like, I didn't talk to a lot of people before this. I was very antisocial. I never talked to anybody. But then I met people in my life that I could talk to. And they only made me a better me. And although sometimes it seems like your prayers aren't always answered quickly. They do, some prayers take a long time and sometimes they are answered in different ways than what we expect. So all in all, let God fill you and bless you because you really can only move up. You can move forward. We may fall back, but if you fall back, take two steps forward and a new step in a new direction you only need to take one step it doesn't have to be a big leap into a new future you just have to take that tiny step so the challenge for this week is don't focus on what you don't have what do you have what are the little things in your life that make you more confident how can you make your mark what is your legacy so comment below what your thoughts about this is and just tell us what makes you who you are. What are the little things in your life that you're thankful for that push you to move forward? Thank you guys. So tonight as we end our residential life service tonight, I pray that you've been encouraged tonight from the words and music and prayers to Keokua. I pray that the rest of your week will be filled with joy and laughter and just small miracles and some big miracles 
that Keakua has in store for you, that you would experience the fullness of his love, his joy, and his power. Epulikako. Lord, we just thank you for this night. We lift this all up to you, Lord, that you may receive all the glory and honor that you deserve. I pray for your hand of blessing upon each residential life student and staff, Lord God, as we walk closer and closer with you throughout life. May you tremendously bless and prosper all of the residential life family, Lord, throughout this season. Lord, we just love you and we praise you and we put our trust in you. May you be blessed forever. In Jesus' holy and mighty name we pray. Amen. Aloha, ahuiho, malama pono. Until next time, see you guys later. Bye.